This is verbal mixed martial arts. Martial arts. Step steady, the technique that I am leading is first class. MMO Plus here in Stockholm, Sweden for UFC on Field TV 9. Joined here by Bruce Buffer. Bruce, thanks for joining us. I don't think you've been here for very long, but how are you enjoying Stockholm, Sweden so far? Well, you know, I've been to Stockholm twice before. I did a K1 here. I did the UFC here last year, and I just got off the plane two hours ago. So not, I'm enjoying the interview. That's about all I've done so far. <laughs> I understand you've got a new book coming out. Yeah, my new book's coming out. Um, it's uh, being published in the UK by Little Brown and by Random House in America. I happen to have a little promo right here. But it's, uh, it's time, and basically it's a story of my life. It's my memoirs and my biography, and I'm very proud of it. I really opened up my heart, and I put a lot into this book, and things you cannot read about on the Internet. Trust me. With it being uh, the whole story of your life and everything, how does the process go in putting that together? You know, the book took me over a year to write, and um, I've forgotten more than I can remember because I've seen so much. I've been in the Octagon now for 17 years. I've only missed two shows in 17 years. And it, when we write the book, I realized that my memory banks opened up and all these incredible memories were coming back to me. But it's not, I'm not just telling you about fights. I don't, you can read about that. I'm going into my experiences with the fighters and, and when the organization was at a high point and then it went to the low point and, let's, and if it wasn't for Dana White and the Fertitas buying it when they did, we wouldn't even be having this interview right now. It'd be just completely underground. So there's many, many aspects of my life in this and I just felt that after all this time that I've been doing this, it's basically it's time I told you my story and how I got here. Speaking of your time spent with the UFC, the organization, can you run through us again how you, you got into the organization, obviously alongside your brother as well, who's known for all the work he's done in boxing? Yeah, well, my brother and I only met uh, about 24 years ago. Uh, we're long-lost half-brothers, and I saw him on TV and discovered he was my brother. Uh, about a year and a half later, we finally met, and when we did, um, I was very successful with owning two companies. I was doing quite well, and, but I had no passion for what I was doing. I'd pretty well burned out. And I would have kept doing it just to work for the money, but I'm not that kind of guy. I, I like to do what I love to do. And I had a, I had an epiphany um, about taking him and making him richer and more famous than he ever dreamed and taking him not out of the boxing ring, but putting him in all areas of sports and entertainment. And I wanted to manage his career and become his partner. And I sold my businesses to do such. And, and I um, told him I was going to make video games and toys and put the let's get ready to rumble phrase, you know, on a bunch of different things. And his main thing to me was, how are you going to do that? And I said, I don't know. I'll figure it out. And to date, it's obviously gone quite well. So he's very happy. And I'm, I'm happy to have been his partner and manager for all these years. You say you saw him on the TV. Did you literally see him on the TV and think, there's a look about that guy that seems familiar to me? What really got to me was, and it's in detail in my book, but what really got to me was the, the Chiron, the, my last name, Buffer, on the screen. And it was Michael Buffer, and I thought, who's this pretty boy, you know, with the name Buffer? I, I've seen every phone book in the United States, and, and the, one of the first things you do is you look for your family name. I'd never seen my name in any phone book, and I thought, what's going on here? My grandfather, our grandfather, was champion of the world, Bantamweight Flyweight champion of the world in boxing back in 1921, back when they only had nine titles, right? When the best fought the best every time. And he never even knew that. And he wanted becoming as popular as the boxers. So it's kind of a unique story in its own way. It's a, it's a, real, it's a real beautiful success story. It's very cool. Speaking again of your brother, it's always cool to see him in action. He was at K1 recently announcing Mirko Krokop, amongst the others. What's he getting up to at the moment? What's he doing at the moment? Yeah. Um, well, right now he's doing, I, mean, I still have him doing a lot of boxing. Uh, we just came out with a national commercial in the United States. Uh, Michael had one of his busiest years last year. A lot of his work is in Europe. He's uh, very high in demand in Germany, and he comes here to the uh, he comes to the UK to do fights. And again, like you said, he was in Sweden, so um, he's working all the time. Said so you played a big role in the, the "Let's Get Ready to Rumble" phrase. Did you ever expect that to have the impact that it's had? Yeah, I did. That's why I sold two businesses and went after it. You know, you don't just jump into something unless you really believe that it, it could work. But what it needed. Uh, it was already very hugely popular in the world of boxing, but my goal was to equate his name with the phrase and make both of them just as famous in all areas of sports and entertainment. And that was my goal uh, as his partner and manager to, to do for him. And that's what I set out to do. Whatever the event be, you've always got the same amount of passion and the same amount of enthusiasm, whether it's UFC 100, UFC, on fuel. Where does that come from, every event, to be exactly the same on, on your peak form? Well. I will not step in that octagon unless I can be that way. 
I have to go in and I dedicate myself to giving 150% of my body, my lung power, my energy, and my passion. I, I do everything in my life I do based on one word, passion. That's what my book's all about. That's how I work. And when I go out there, I consider that I'm only as good as my performance I'm doing right now. So I go out there to do the best job I can every night I step into that octagon. And I feel that I owe it um, to the fighters because it's all about, it's not about me, it's all about the fighters. And it's all about the fans watching. And the fighters should put on their best fight. I should put on my best night of announcing and give you all my energy. And the day that I can't do that is the day that I will seriously consider that I need to retire. But my passion just keeps growing, so you're stuck with me for quite a few years yet. <laughs> Speaking of your passions outside of the Octagon as well, poke obviously, you're keeping active with that, still got a lot going on there? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, it's hard because I'm on the road so much because these tournaments I like to play, they take two, three, four uh, the days, maybe even a week, ten days sometimes, like in the World Series of Poker. But I just uh, final tabled uh, World Poker Tour table, and I just did really well in Montreal in the World Poker Tour main event. All the top pros from around the world came in, 1,273 players. And as of day three, I went out at 19th. I got 19th. First place was three quarters of a million dollars. Ooh, I was tasting it. It was there. I made money. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm a competitor. I want first place. I want to win. I like to win. Yeah. I've got a friend who's pretty handy at poker himself. He'd quite like to face off against you. With being who you are, you ever handling call outs and that kind of thing? Wait, give me that again. Have you ever hand have you ever been called out at the poker table sure. from being who you are? People oh, wanting to face Bruce Buffer. Called out to play poker. Called out to play poker. I've been called out for fighting, I've been called out to play poker, I've been called out. <laughs> you know, I just look at it and say, Great, I'll make you famous. Let's do it. You know? So you win most of these call outs? You know, if somebody says to you they win all the time, they're lying through their teeth. I will tell you that I'm a winning player that I haven't lost in the last nine years as far as the tally at the end of the month, end of the year. But to say that I've never had a losing night, of course, of course. See, that's the thing. It's like a fighter getting knocked down to the canvas has got to have the wherewithal to get up and start swinging again, right? In business, you get knocked down. you got to get up and start swinging again. In poker, you get knocked down. But you can't let it affect the next night you go play. It's like if you do that, you're going to be gun shy. And I don't want to play gun shy. I want to play balls to the wall. So how did you get into all the poker? You seem to be pretty much on a pro level, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, i actually been playing cash game poker since I was 14. My dad taught me how to play when I was like nine years old. I, I go into it in my book. My dad taught me about how to play poker, how to play blackjack. And he said, when it comes to horse racing, the only way to follow a horse is with a shovel. So I took his words, and I don't bet on horses. Except maybe taking a girlfriend to the track once every couple of years for a fun day. But... um I, if I'm going to train, if I'm going to, I'm a surfer, so I've surfed since I was 15. The only way to get better is to surf the hardest waves you can surf. That makes you better. When you train in martial arts, which I've trained in my whole life, the only way to get better is to train with the best people you can find to train with and people that are a level higher than you. The only way to get better at poker, because it takes five minutes to learn and a lifetime to master, which is the famous phrase, is to play with the best players you can. And if they beat you, they beat you. But then you go back and you hopefully can beat them again. So. Surfing as well, it sounds like Bruce Buffer's got a hell of a lot of hobbies going on outside of the Octagon. I do, I do. I have, I'm a collector. I collect vintage movie memorabilia, movie posters from the 1940s, 30s, 50s. Um, I'm a collector of antique weaponry, guns and artifacts. I'm not a hunter, I can't shoot Bambi. But I can shoot a 200 pound man coming through my door in a minute, you know, if he's going to hurt my family. But um, outside of that, I collect uh, sports memorabilia. And I, they're like forms of investment for me too, because they're great areas to invest in. But I mean, I, I just uh, I have many interests, many interests in my life. Fantastic! Thanks a lot for speaking to us. This is MMA Plus in Stockholm, Sweden, for UFC on Fuel TV Nine. Thank you very much. Cheers. Hi, I'm Bruce Buffer, your voice of the Octagon, and you're watching MMA Plus.